Last week, we'd heard that Voyager 1 had left the solar system, and then we heard that it hadn't left the solar system, then we heard it had again, and we got all confused. Where the heck is this thing? Hey gang, Trace here for D News. After all that Voyager 1 news last week, we were here at D News asking ourselves, do we even know where the end of the solar system is? The short answer is, yeah, we do. It's way out past Pluto, where the heliosheath stops, and a barrier called the heliopause begins. If you want more information on Voyager 1, by the way, make sure you check out our very first video ever. It's really good. The heliopause is so far out there that the sun's cosmic influence is blown away by other interstellar forces. The sun is constantly throwing out a shield of cosmic particles that eventually get beaten back as they travel away from our star. Voyager 1 is closing in on the heliopause, we reported that last year, but scientists don't know when it will get there or what will happen when it does, since it's never happened before. Right now, Voyager 1 is cruising on the magnetic highway, or a place where the magnetic influence of our sun intermingles with the magnetic influence of other interstellar bodies. Let's say it crosses the heliopause. What happens next? Well, it was supposed to be the bow shock, or an area of supercharged plasma pushed ahead of the sun like water around the bow of a ship. But according to new information from Voyager 1 and IBEX and a few other probes, our solar system isn't moving fast enough. We're only going 52,000 miles an hour, and that's not enough to make a bow shock. After our non-existent bow shock, the 36-year-old probe will head into the Oort cloud. This is where comets are born, from the gas, dust, and ice, and ammonia that floats around out there. Then, outside the Oort cloud, things get a little hazy. No pun intended. Scientists are pretty sure they know what's in our galactic neighborhood, and we are currently zooming through a cloud called the Local Bubble, which is filled with low-density interstellar medium, or ISM. That's the name for charged particles, gas, dust, and other junk ranging in density and heat that float between solar systems. During this part of the journey, Voyager 1 could meet some tiny little protostars, or little comets, or other crazy things that we have only dreamed about, like dark matter. Assuming Voyager 1 reaches the Oort cloud in its working lifetime, it should still be sending back data, but Voyager 1 is powered by heat from a nuclear isotope, plutonium-238 dioxide to be exact. So as that isotope decays, it produces less and less and less heat. When it was launched, we were working with about 470 watts, now we're down to about 315. It's getting cold out there. NASA estimates the fuel should last until about 2020. Even so, let's say we reach the inside of the Oort cloud, which is huge. That is likely the last thing the old gal's gonna see. Does stuff like this make you look up at the sky with excitement? Or are you more just like, meh? Share your spacey feelings with us in the comments or tweet at us at DNews, find us on Facebook or Google Plus and post there. We're here, phone home. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. Make sure that you subscribe. See you around.